home battery prices are falling. So if you're thinking of getting or upgrading your battery and you're wondering what's happening with prices, this video is for you and I think you'll like it. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Home batteries are great. They help you save the planet and they also help you save money at the same time. During the winter, with the right energy tariff, you can charge your home battery up overnight using an off-peak rate. Then use all that stored energy to power all your home appliances throughout the next day. That helps your pocket because you're no longer having to pay the higher standard rate for your energy. And it also helps the planet because you're drawing energy from the grid when it's cleanest. And more than that, you're no longer drawing energy during peak times when it is the dirtiest. And if you have solar panels, during the summer you can charge your home battery with all your excess solar generation. Then later, once the sun has gone in, you can use all that stored energy to power your home appliances into the evening. Again, this helps your pocket because you're not having to draw from the grid. And again, it also helps the planet because you're self-consuming all of your solar generation and it doesn't get much greener than that. But there is a problem, and that's the cost of getting a home battery. They're not cheap. It's not too much of an issue if you're more environmentally motivated than financial. You might be in the fortunate position to buy a home battery despite the high cost in order to derive the environmental benefits. And if that's the case, that's commendable. But for most people, it's key that the financial benefits of having a battery at least cover the costs after a few years. And if you've been researching the market over the last year or so, the prices of home batteries make it really difficult to achieve a reasonable payback period. Now for those of you who have watched some of my past videos, you might remember this one, where I asked the question, was it better to buy now, which was 12 months ago, or wait a couple of years for prices to fall? Essentially, I wanted to make the case that if the financial aspects were important to you, then waiting two years might actually result in a quicker payback than buying straight away. Now, I won't lie, opinion was most definitely split in the comments. Some of the commenters really thought I'd lost the plot. But here we are today and prices have indeed fallen over that time. 12 months ago there was a global supply and demand issue. High demand as people were looking to mitigate higher energy costs with solar installations. And a limited supply of both solar equipment and also trained resource to install those systems. And because demand was vastly outstripping supply, prices were higher than they would normally be. And this gave rise to a fear of missing out in case prices continue to rise beyond people's budgets. Fast forward to today and the supply issue has vastly improved, meaning it's much cheaper to buy a solar installation today than it was 12 months ago. But what about home battery prices in particular? What's happened to battery prices over the last few years? What's driving the price today? And what can we expect to happen with home battery prices over the next five years or so? To answer those questions, here's a good place to start. The predominant chemistry for home batteries is lithium iron. And this chart from Our World in Data shows how lithium iron battery prices have fallen since 1991. In 1991, the price was just over 7,500 US dollars per kilowatt hour capacity. And as you can see that by the time we got to 2018, that price had fallen to just around $200. That's a whopping 97% price erosion over the space of just 20 years. And this was one of the points I was making in that video that despite temporal issues like supply and demand constraints, you can't stop the pace of technology innovation and also manufacturing process improvements. These two combined means that technology products like home batteries just get better and cheaper all the time. Just a quick intermission to say that if you're getting a lot out of my videos, I'd really welcome your support as it all helps keep the channel going. And there's a couple of easy ways you can do this. I have a Patreon where you can find out more about my own solar journey, ask me questions about what you're planning to do in your journey, and also get access to a number of helpful utilities I've developed. Thanks to the many hundreds of you who have already signed up, it really means a great deal to me. And if you live in the UK and you're thinking about moving your provider to Octopus Energy, it costs nothing to use my referral code and we'll both get £50. And again, thank you to everyone who's used my code already. Okay, the chart we just saw only went up to 2018. What happened after that? To find out, we can look at this chart from Goldman Sachs, which is compiled using data from a number of sources. It runs from 2019 until the end of this decade. You can see immediately that despite the blip in 22 and 23, prices generally fell. 
and are expected to continue falling from $120 per kilowatt hour today down to $80 by 2030. That blip was due to raw material supply issues for the cathode terminals and batteries, for example nickel, cobalt, manganese, phosphorus and of course lithium. And as you can see from the chart, cathode prices are expected to normalise again until the end of the decade. Now it doesn't look like the overall cost of the battery materials is changing much over the decade, but remember these prices are after inflation. And of course there's still a lot of technology innovation to come here as well. Today's batteries are all about lithium iron technology, but tomorrow's batteries might be about sodium iron instead, or perhaps another chemistry that hasn't come to light yet. Such technology innovation, as we have seen, inevitably brings prices down. It's worth also looking at the remainder of the bill of materials. You can see that the sell to pack costs, as well as the OPEX and even profit, is diminishing markedly over the decade. This is due to manufacturing process improvements and also a massively growing global market, leading to economies of scale. It might be worth a quick look then at the market expectations for lithium ion batteries. Here's a chart from eSource showing global demand until the end of the decade, expressed in terms of gigawatt hours. By the way, if you'd like to access these charts yourself, I've placed links to all of them in the video description. You can see here that we have a demand of 607 today, but really we're only just getting started, with demand heading towards 3000 by 2030. And of course there are always people out there saying we're going to run out of lithium, especially with the transition from internal combustion engine cars to EVs. Well this chart shows that we'll always have enough supply to meet demand. And if there is a move to sodium iron chemistry from lithium iron, then we really don't need to worry at all. Well, unless we run out of seawater, I guess. Okay, if this video has got you thinking about getting a home battery, or maybe increasing the size of your existing battery, then here are a couple of videos I made recently. The first goes into detail about the many benefits of having a battery, or getting a bigger battery as part of your solar installation. And the second gives you the lowdown on what kind of battery to get, with also a comparison on many of the most popular batteries available today. And even if battery prices are not quite within your budget today, it won't be long before they are. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and also to subscribe to see the videos I'm working on just now. I hope you've had a great start to the new year and I'll see you soon.